Alright guys, Hatch Kravik again today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Online Call of Duty for the 2023 season is officially done. No more sound equalization cheese from now at least to the end of the season. It may well return next year. It's a very important game today, not just for Major 5 qualification and seeding, but also for the World Championship itself. Vegas Legion's chances again taking a bit of a shock to the system, to be honest, with both Thieves and Toronto letting them down over the last couple of days. Very much enjoyed to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Just a quick one on Illy actually. He's returning to more, you know, public knowledge really in terms of he's actually playing some games and he's, as you can see, tweeting a bit more on the timeline as well. And a pretty interesting time because now is the time shortly after Major 5, around about this time at Major 5 and of course champs to follow where teams will think about making changes. I know some have said, oh, Illy, you know, looking at the Optic team now compared to when Illy was in the team shows that he wasn't particularly good on the roster, which is true fundamentally in their recent periods he wasn't quite as strong as he was in the early days of the Vanguard season doesn't mean he's a bad player doesn't mean that he's not league caliber absolutely not in my opinion especially with Illy's connections highly respected by many in the league he'll get a spot somewhere next season I'm pretty much sure of it depends where it is though that's a big debate that will rage on so let's dive into this Toronto versus Rocker series right and I thought this would be competitive Rocker were very good in their respawns just the other day and that has continued and the issue is now for Vegas Look Looking at this Rocker team, is it realistically possible that Vegas are going to outplace this team by a couple of places? It's obviously possible, but it's going to be a hard time for Vegas because Rocker right now are playing like a team that probably isn't going to get top 12. That's how it looks to me. And look, their change definitely improved them. Bantz mentioned in the post-game interview that he feels like he was in his head a little bit because that was the question to me. Attach coming back in was almost a no-brainer. I don't really know why they dropped him in the first place. Femme going to the SMG was a no-brainer. The question was, should Bantz or Afro have remained in the team? And if Afro can slay as he typically did, then maybe that's the way to go. But if Bantz can slay as Afro maybe should have done, or maybe Bantz can do at his peak performance levels, then you've got a perfectly acceptable Rocker team. And that's what they are. Fame has been very impressive. Rocker win the game one here against Toronto Ultra. Definitely Toronto, their respawns haven't been spectacular. And honestly, even though Kleenex and Scrappy have played great lately, Insight's individual level has not really been there. Hixie's kind of done what you'd expect. But Insight has not been spectacular for the last couple of months or so and I think that's kind of what's uh, brought them down a little bit so question to be raised we always ask the question really about when teams have one dominant AR and one less dominant AR it's the skies and awakening push and pull of the Florida days when when skies was going off awakening wasn't and the other way around as well it's not necessarily so much the case in this case because Scrappy's always going off it seems and Insight is uh, sometimes struggling but there's a debate as to whether that's because Scrappy's hoovering up all the kills or whether fundamentally there's a bit of an underperformance early from Insight over the last couple so fundamentally, it's an online game and they do get the job done in the search and destroy. And I said the other day, right, that I thought this would go game five. I thought Toronto would win because Rocker's search and destroy looks pretty weak. Their respawn is better. Usually when you make a change, your respawn is liable to probably improve quicker than the search and destroy. It takes a bit of time to get up to speed in that mode generally. In the respawns, you'll get in there quite quickly. Got a lot of practice in play. And if your team's good, your respawn's going to be good relatively quickly. The search takes a bit more work. They lose the game too and then they get bodies game three this has been a good map for rocker so far this year but toronto are possibly the best control team in the game definitely right up there and they blew rocker out of the park now this was a key point though because scrappy shot the body of attach i think this is just scrappy being scrappy to be honest right i don't think that um attach has wronged him in any way or anything right because attach is such a sound guy that i don't necessarily think anyone in the league has particular beef with him but nonetheless whenever you see someone shoot bodies you immediately think about the potential consequences there and those consequences certainly arrived down the line. This game though was very rapid and Toronto went in about five minutes and Fame actually had seven kills. So Fame was great over the course of the series but he had a really rough one here and uh, therefore this tweet arrived on the timeline as it usually does when someone drops seven. But then here we go into the game four and it started off pretty impressively. Scrappy was hitting some shots. One, two, three. Like, like all right, here we go. Toronto are going to close this out. Three, one. Good for Vegas and, um, you know, obviously ideal for Toronto securing themselves the 
the best possible seed going into the winner's bracket of the major, but that's not what occurred. This went all the way down to the wire. It was actually Rocker that took a pretty big lead, I think, then Tronto came back into it. Then again, Rocker had a bit of an advantage. This I actually thought at the end of this scrap was in the points, but um, I believe he was probably a meter or so behind as the final tick comes through, so he doesn't quite get in in time. Probably he gets traded here anyway, and therefore it doesn't matter so much. But um, yeah, great game for, I mean, Scrappy had 38 kills in this one, but a touch after getting his body shot, 36 in 25. But to me, the real standout here was Bantz. He had a phenomenal series. We know that when Bantz is on point, and he's done it for Toronto in the past, especially stage two of the Cold War season up against FaZe in the grand finals. Yes, it was online, but he dropped a 1.44 in that series to defeat the, you know, one of the greatest teams we've seen in the Cedar era in Cold War FaZe. When Bantz is on point, he really has some high level ability and he was playing great today. And that was the key difference I thought in this series because Cammy didn't exactly take over. He was still very solid. Fame did his thing. Attached did what you'd expect him to do. But Bantz is kind of now that X factor, I think, for this team in the same way that Afro maybe was before. Afro was kind of like the win condition for them. Now it's almost like Bantz is the win condition. If he's playing well, if he's dropping a 1.1 as he can do, then they're going to be winning a lot of series. So they force this to a game five and then they win the game five. I'm sure Toronto will feel like they could have won this one just because I think they're up 4-3. They had some chances. They eventually go down 6-4. Again, Bantz was a key figure in that final round. And I do wonder, look, I mentioned this in last night's video because I kind of saw it coming a little bit, this whole Scrappy Stanley thing. Now, I don't know if the, I don't think this was deliberate from Scrappy at all to throw this final map, but it must be said, it's very interesting, isn't it? How Scrappy was frying all series and then the final map, he goes two in nine to lose the map five. And, um, you know, obviously he's not happy about losing because they would have wanted to win, you would have thought, and secure themselves the best possible seeds. But obviously we know the Stanley versus Scrappy drama when Stanley was on Toronto, then he was dropped and Scrappy was very happy that that was the case and was talking trash to him ever since. Then Stanley got revenge when they beat them a while ago, back on the 14th of April. But obviously Scrappy could kind of get his revenge by losing to Rocker and therefore they get 10 more points. I don't think that's what happened necessarily, but I just think the kind of, um, you know, collapsing in this way as Scrappy and the Ultra guys did in game five definitely doesn't help the, yeah, it doesn't really hurt Toronto too much, to be honest, but it certainly hurts Vegas Legion. Their task is now much more challenging. Scrappy says no more sound equalization. But yes, this victory for the Rocker guys was absolutely massive for them. 10 points getting to 180. Such an important victory for them. Unfortunately, I don't believe this from Parasite is actually true that if Subliners were to have, you know, gone on to win the final series, we'll discuss that in a second, then Rocker and Vegas play round one. I don't think that's necessarily the case, but there is a world, I think there was a world, if Rocker lost this series that to uh, Toronto in game five, they might well have been playing Optic round one, and then if they lost that, I think they would have played Thieves. So they avoided a gauntlet, right? Because if they'd have lost to Toronto there, and they'd have gone into the bracket, playing Optic and Thieves as their two matches, which would have possibly been the case, I believe, then it would have been possibly over for them top 12 and Vegas would have been very close to getting the job done. However, they win the game five, they secure themselves 10 more points and they set up a phenomenal run for them because fundamentally now you look at it and you think, well, maybe Surge are the most vulnerable, maybe Boston are the most vulnerable just because Minnesota are looking rather good. Like you can't see this team as they're playing right now with the improvements they've made that they probably should have made a while ago with fame on the SMG you know, they don't look like a team that's going to get top 12. It can happen. Four teams get top 12 every event, which is far from a, a small amount of the field. But after that result, that left the standings like this. So Rocker above Vegas based on their map count percentage. Obviously, they were above Florida. We'll go on to discuss the Boston series here in a second. But yeah, that leaves Vegas relatively low and with a difficult first round game, it's got to be said. That also means with Minnesota getting to 180, that Florida Mutineers can officially no longer kind of uh, leapfrog them. Florida at 110. So if if they win the major, they get 65 points. 175 is their maximum, and that's now no longer enough to make the world championships. They were turning up, but they've still got a chance to do something at major five when they get there. TJ's like, look, it's all a part of the script. Hopefully, it works out for them soon. But um, yeah, this is tough for Vegas because they're 20 points behind now. They need to place top six minimum at the major. They need Rocker to get top 12, and they will need to get top six absolute bare minimum to get to 180 and ensure they can leapfrog Rocker. If Rocker Rocker get top eight, therefore they need to get top four, or Vegas need to get top four. If Rocker get top six, then Vegas have to get top three. They have to outplace them by 20 points. The tiebreakers, if it's a dead, like, head v head tiebreaker, it will go their way. If there's multiple teams tied, then it gets even more interesting, and we'll go on to discuss that in a couple of minutes. Before we get there, though, we've got to go through the speed run. Thieves versus 
the London Royal Ravens. This was, as I say, a bit of a speed run. Unfortunately for London, they got quite close here and Thieves did not impress me. Let's be honest, like this is a London team that are obviously mentally chalked. They've, I mean, the way they lost these maps as well would have been so frustrating for them given that they actually got quite close in some of these. But Thieves were not playing like, um, you know, the other day when FaZe played this team, London, they just rolled through in about 30 minutes. Thieves did not have an easier time. Yes, it was a 3-0, but this game one, they squandered quite the lead and London almost made a comeback, but they didn't and they lost game one anyway. Same story game two, it went 4-4. There was a 2v2 to potentially go up 5-4. Doesn't happen, Thieves win 6-4 and then they win the control as well. But even the control wasn't super convincing. So yes, victory for Thieves, congratulations. But as Octane says and others were pointing out as well, no excuses for their performance. Need to make the most of their remaining practice and Major 5 to catch them fire because they are not playing. And even in this series, they're not playing like a team that's going to win another event. And that has massive implications for Major 5, for the World Championship, but also for what their team looks like next season, let's be honest. These were the numbers. Draza Envoy especially turning up in this one, but fundamentally, this almost felt like a foregone conclusion. And to add insult to injury then to the Las Vegas Legion's day, Boston Breach also got the victory over the New York Subliners. First of all, Envoy saying Burger Bowl champs over that last series thought was pretty funny, but a surprising move, no doubt, for the Subliners. I'm still not sure exactly why they went down this route. Sky's the one to make way for Wardy. Wardy had a great series individually. The guy could obviously shoot straight and make good decisions and was playing in the role where he's most comfortable on the SMG. But Kismet moving to the flex to make that happen with Hydra there. And, you know, I was a bit confused by this specific decision. And also, why do it now? If there's a time to do it, you'd have thought it would have been maybe a little while ago, especially when you're trying to prepare for your run. Maybe they think, you know what, last online game of the season, who really cares? I know there was some comments of you guys on this morning's video saying, well, is this like a management-led thing where management is saying, hey, look, we want to probably sell on Wardy next season because our team's pretty good. We might not need Wardy on our starting team. Hydra Kiz, that's working pretty good as a duo. Wardy could definitely improve other teams. So why not give him a game to showcase himself and therefore we can sell him on at the end of the season? Maybe that's the plan. I just don't really see any other motivations here for them to do this now. But I thought it was cool that Wardy went in. But um, it will be no doubt frustrating for the other teams because I do think Subliners win this series with their normal roster with all the preparation they've had. But they lose it to Boston. I think it would have been close anyway. But um, was this just a venture to try and pump Wardy's price up at the end of the season? And, you know, fundamentally, I think Subliners were probably undefeated against Boston so far in the CDL. That's coming to an end today. Crump went massive in this game. One had a quad feed actually right here. Pretty ridiculous. The gunny on these teams is absolutely out of control. And Boston, we know they don't always put it to good use, but they just about got over the line game one. They got pretty much destroyed though in the search. And I was, I mean, this was pretty bad for Boston in a way, because I just mentioned a few minutes ago about the Rocker versus Ultra series that Rocker's search and destroy was a bit suspect because they just started teaming together. You don't usually see a team that's brand new, such as the Wardy lineup here, do good in search. So that's positive for them. But at the same time, it's um, not so good for Boston that they're getting blown out by a team that's literally just formed a few minutes before this one. I imagine they were still practicing before. Beans with a nice clutch to nearly make it happen. And then we had some body shots during the control. Hydra dunks on Awakening here and shoots his body. Doesn't matter though, because Boston clutch up round one and that's enough to get them over the line and they win the final map of the series as well in the hard points. So well done to Boston, right? They would have been frankly embarrassed had they lost this series to the New York Subliners with the substitute coming through. Wardy did well individually. I was pretty impressed with what I saw from him. But Vegas, this now means Boston are at 190. Serger at 190 starting and losers. Boston at 190 starting and winners. Rocker at 180 starting and winners. And Vegas at 160 starting and winners. That's a serious challenge. They will need to get at least top six Vegas, if not top four. And that means making a championship Sunday if they want to make it happen. It's not impossible. We'll talk about the bracket in more detail tomorrow. The subliners last season weren't going to make champs and they made a miracle run during the major four qualifiers and the major going four in one and then top two at the major and just about squeaked in. So it can be done. It has been done before. These crazy comebacks into champs. It's not out of the realms of possibility, but it got a whole lot harder based on the results today. Both of which really going against the Las Vegas Legion. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.